Joining me now is former NFL player Lorenzo Booker. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. All Glad right, for here. everyone who doesn't know who this guy is, I don't know how you can't. He was a <laughs> St. Bonaventure running back stud who went on to receive the Gatorade High School Heisman and went on to play his college career at Florida State. Now, he got drafted back in 2007 by Miami Dolphins, but he played for teams like the Bears, the Vikings, and the Eagles. That is quite a resume. Been around, been around. I like that. I like that. <laughs> been around the world, right? Well, Lorenzo was at last night's Camarillo's Real Mesa game with me. So let's go ahead and break down this game. I mean, Camarillo won by 25 points. They did, they did. I still think the score was a little deceiving, though. Real Mesa played well. Um, their skill positions were pretty similar, but uh, Tewa Sanchez, the new offensive coordinator at Camarillo, has done a great job of changing the culture there. And probably the two guys that benefited most from that were uh, Jake Constantine and, and Frankie Tostado. Um, I think Jake did a great job of being accurate. I mean, the ball was exactly where it's supposed to be all the time, and Frankie has got great natural hands. He gets in and out of his routes well, and I think, you know, we, we might be seeing one of the better one-two combinations in the county here as they develop, as, as the season goes on. So it was, it was a good game. I all liked right. it. I really like that, but we can't say enough about Camarillo's defense. Wow, they really made it hard for Real Mesa's quarterback to really find that open man. And I really think that was the difference, to be honest. I mean, again, it's easy to look at those two guys and, and, and you know, see Tostado going up, taking fades, and, and, and again, the accuracy from, from Frank, but uh, I, that defensive line made it extremely difficult for Real Mesa to get anything done. I think that's probably the unsung hero of the night. Uh, I thought the D-line did just as much as anybody to, to help control the tempo of that game. Camarillo <laughs> is now in a new league, the Camino League, so yeah. they're not, not not playing the Real Mesa anymore. They're now playing Thousand Oaks, Newberry Park, Newberry Park, and Royal. Talk about this new league that Camarillo is now in and what this means for their future. Well, it's, it's good for them because they they are going to play teams that are, are have been consistently good, teams that have been consistently in the postseason, um, and they also obviously have have St. Bonaventure on the schedule too. So now the thing is, they will not be playing St. Bonaventure in the postseason. So for okay. them, it just means that the, the 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 elevated play will will stop at that particular point. Once the regular season is over, they will play Royal Newberry Park in the playoffs. You won't see them playing Wainimi or Oxnard or anybody like that. So um, St. Bonaventure still will have to end up playing teams like Modern Day, Long Beach Poly. So uh, for Camarillo fans, you can relax in regards to, in regards <laughs> to that. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to step up to that level just yet. But it, it's good preparation for them because after seeing teams like St. Bonnie and having to go into the playoffs, they'll be ready for pretty much anything anybody has to throw at them. Well, I need to ask you, it's week zero. Who is the team to be, in your opinion? I mean, in regards to the entire county, it's hard to... Let's break it. Let's just say Ventura County. Who is that team to be? It's it's hard to get past St. Bonaventure right now. Oh I mean, it, they've gosh. been rolling for how long? It's, it's a machine. Oh it's a machine gosh. at this point. I'm, I'm sorry. I feel I feel a little... Wow. <laughs> well, on that note, we'll leave it on that note, all right? Lorenzo, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. And we